I spent the whole first 20 years of my scientific career um, capitalizing on that ability and learning how genes worked in a very basic way. There was so much going on then that it was, it was really fascinating. And I started thinking, wow, it'd be really cool to tie that technology together with my interest in human behavior. And I started thinking and thinking. Finally, at some point, um, I think actually my partner at that time, Bruce Lehman, said, well, why don't you study sexual orientation? I was like, oh my God, yeah, that's really a good idea. So I went rushing to the library and I realized no one had studied anything about sexual orientation at a molecular level ever. It was a completely wide open field. And there's nothing better for a scientist than something that's really hot and interesting than where you have the whole field to yourself. If I had been a research scientist at a typical university, uh, I would have had to go and apply for a grant, but I was very fortunate to be at the National Institutes of Health. I put together a strong proposal. Um, I got some other people that were expert to, to join me and um, said, hey, this is what I want to do. Although my boss is a little bit surprised, she said, okay. And then she kicked it upstairs to her boss and it eventually got kicked all the way up to the Bush White House. Um, but Tony Fauci, who was head of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Disease, says, I know Dean Hamer is a good scientist. This looks like a solid proposal. And we set out to find out whether there is a genetic basis for sexual orientation and if so, how it works. It really was from very much a point of understanding the science that the research got started.